Everyone is reliant upon Allah. Without Allah, there is nothing in creation. The, even the leaf that you see moving in the wind would not move without the permission of Allah. Allah ordains absolutely every single matter. Even the sky and everything that is in a systematic order is only there because of God. If there were more than one God, then if you would look at the bigger picture, there would be some sort of dispute. There will be some, you can take the best of friends, you can take the best of friends and you can say to them, okay, what do you feel like eating today? This is a really, really simple example. They will turn around and they will say, oh, one might say, I feel like pizza. Other one will say, you know, I feel like a chicken burger. Or switch it around another day or someone might say, you know, I feel like a pizza. And the other one will say, no, I feel like a beef burger. Right? No one is always going to agree with the other person. So if there was more than one God, everything that you see in a systematic order would not be in place. There would be some kind of, you know, like the earth falling in on itself, the sky falling in and of itself. But Allah has made it so that everything in it is in a systematic order. If I am still here and I go and tell Rahim to go and stand all the way over there and I take up a packet full of M&Ms, empty them all in my hand and I say to him, you take the packet and go and stand over there. What are the chances that I am going to be able to throw every single M&M into that packet that he's holding? Near enough impossible. possible. So what we believe is, and I'm just giving these like worldly examples to just to make it easy to understand. I apologize for anything coming across, across uh, condescending, so it's not my um, intention. But it's near enough impossible. You know, it, it just wouldn't happen. So everything that you see around you, everything you see in the human body, right? Everything is just in a systematic order, and that can only be the case if there is a creator, if there is a sustainer, someone who's allowing this all to happen. And if there was more than one God, there will be dispute on certain matters. And the reason I mention that is because there are people who believe in more than one God. So that's why I'm mentioning that. And with regards to giving birth and being given birth to, everything that we understand of creation, it cannot apply to the Creator. Because once we start applying creation to the Creator, He stops being the Creator. Right? So if we say he is sitting up there, then that means he's not down here. If we say God is with us here in the mosque, then that means when you go home, you've got no access to God. Now you're restricting God to a specific place. And if you say Allah was given birth to you, right now you're saying before that there was no God. And if you say Allah is going to be at until a specific time, now you're saying after that point there's no God. So the question now then is, what is the point of having a creator who is deficient, who is limited? And this is what we believe. God is without limits, he has no restrictions, he always was there, he always will be there. Everything that occurs only occurs by his permission. And if he want, does not want something to occur, it will not occur. Now the very follow-up question that will pop into your mind is, okay, so if there is a God, why is there so much oppression, etc., occurring? This is a question I get regularly. And the fact of the matter is, Allah says in the Quran to us, He says that we are representatives of God on earth. We have been given a commandment, we have been given guidance, now it's up to us to make sure that those commandments and those guidance are fulfilled. So if on the day of judgment, anyone is brave enough to say to God, you know, if you are real and if you are here, you are all powerful, why did you allow this to happen? And the simple response is, why did we allow it to happen? We are the representatives of God. We are his vice chairmen upon the earth. Why are we letting all of this occur? It's like turning around and saying to, you know, you're hungry, you're hungry, and 
you go and say to your mother, it's your fault, I'm hungry. Your mother's going to, I'm not drawing like a comparison, I'm just like a way of example, so you can understand. And your mum's going to turn around and say, how is that my fault if you're hungry? She's going to turn around and say, there's food in the microwave, there's food in the fridge, go and eat. How are you going to blame me? If you don't go to work, you can't go and blame the government and say, it's your fault, I'm broke. It's your fault, I'm unemployed. They're going to turn around and say, wait a minute, you never went to employment. You never went to get a job or anything. How can you blame us? So these are just certain things. And someone would argue and they will say, and the reason why I'm just bringing these questions up because somewhere down the line, they are going to come into your mind. And I've had these questions regularly. This is why I'm addressing them without you even asking. But um, So someone might now ask, but I've got a good heart. I've got a good heart. I do everything good, so why do I need to believe in a religion? And the reason for it is because God says to us, by time, mankind is at a loss. So he swears by time, and this is the time of the best of time, which is the time of the prophets of Mali Hussein. Well lesser, in the insan and the fee that indeed mankind is at a loss. In the Ladina, except those Aman, those who believe. Those who carry out good actions. What do I saw bil haq? Those who cause towards the truth. What do I saw bil haqi? What do I saw bil sab? Those who cause call towards patience. So he gives us, God gives us now four conditions. He gives us four conditions. That mankind is at a loss, except for those who believe, those who do good actions, those who call to the truth and those who are patient. Now, if we look at this in the example of, you went, you went to college? No. You go to school and stuff, right? No, I left school and uh, did an apprenticeship and now I'm Okay, not brilliant, school, right? right? That's, that's, a good, that's a good thing that you did. I always advise people to do that. But if you look at the school system, you sit exams only. Mm. You have examinations. Now, what it boils down to is this. You've been given four questions. And the teacher, I'm going to use this worldly example again. The teacher turns around and says, right, you've got four questions that you need to answer when you go into the exam. These are the four questions that you are going to be asked. These are the answers. Now, you go on the first day of term. You're there at school and you're, this is year 10, now you're preparing for your GCSEs. First day of year 10, your teacher tells you this. He says, you've got four questions. These are the answers. This is what you're going to be asked. Make sure you remember these. If you remember these, you are going to pass. If you don't, you're going to fail. You go on about your business. You go through the whole of year 10. You take this paper, you throw it in the bottom of your rucksack, and you forget about it. Beginning of year 11, teacher tells you again, these are the four questions you're going to be asked. Make sure you remember these, make sure you revise, make sure you answer it properly. Come exam day, year 10, year 11, you've just been messing about, not listening to anything. You've just been partying with your mates, chilling out, you know, bunking off school, X, Y, Z. Now you come and you sit in the exam. You sit in the exam, those four questions are now in front of you. You've already been told what's going to be on that exam where you've completely ignored it. You sit there to answer those questions and what happens? Your mind goes blank. Your mind goes blank. You try to answer those four questions, you fail on all of them. Dave comes in. Dave looks at all of these questions and says, yeah, yeah, I remember some of these. But he only answers question two, question three, and question four. He doesn't answer the first one, which is what? that you have to believe, right? Third guy comes in. He does not answer the last three, but he answers the first one, which is to believe. Now, what's the case here? The teacher said, if you answer all four of these questions, you will pass. If you do not, then, quote unquote, you will be put into detention and you will fail. Now, Dave comes in. He answers nothing. 
What's going to happen to him? Fail. He's going straight into detention. The next guy comes in. He answers the remaining four, three questions. He doesn't answer the belief one. He goes into detention. He fails. The final person comes in. He answers the first one, which is to believe. But he fails on the last three. He fails and goes into detention. Now in comes Amr. Amr comes in now, and he looks at these questions and he says, yeah, yeah, I remember this. He said this in year 10. He reminded us again year 11. Now let me go and answer these. He answers all of them. Now what happens? He passes. He gets a grade. He moves on to the next process. He goes to, quote unquote, let's say, college or university. Right? Now in this parable, we have the scenario here. The teacher that would be given us the answers to the main test that we're going to sit in our life is who is the prophets. They're the ones who bring down the scripture. And I'm not drawing a comparison just by way of example. They bring down the scripture. They say to us, this is what you need to do to succeed. If you do this, you will succeed. You will pass the process and you will go to the next stage. And the next stage here, when I'm speaking about the college and university, it's paradise, it's Jannah, right? That's what you're asking about, that's paradise. But if you fail any of these, then you're going to put into detention. And what's the detention? That's Jahannam. That's the hellfire. Now, if Amr spent his entire time revising, year 10, year 11, he remembered what the teacher said, he did everything. He goes and sits and he passes. Now the other three, they failed absolutely everything. And now the examiner looks at it and says, you know what? They didn't answer all four questions, but they gave it a try. They were there. They showed up. So just to give them a pat on the back, they're going to get a pat on the back. They can move on to the next stage as well. Now, if we look at what is just and fair, just look at it from a worldly point of view. Would it be fair that Ahmad has worked his socks off in those two years? He's revised. He's done absolutely everything, right? And now he's got the grace that he required. Now, the other three, they've been prattling about, messing around, not doing what is required from them. Would it now be fair for the examiner to say, you know what, just for the fact that you turned off, you're going to get the pass as well. It wouldn't be fair, would it? So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he looks at the matter, he is part of his justice and his um, equality and fairness that he allows people to go into the hellfire or he allows people to go into paradise. So that's what it will be. And if he didn't allow this, then it would just be a matter of, you know, there's no justice. We can't have a God who is not just. Right? So when you see things like, you know, these earthquakes happening like Turkey and stuff in Syria, and you know, people are dying and stuff like that, and people may think, you know, if there's a God, why is he allowing this to happen? Now, you know, for us, we don't have, we don't have an issue with this. It's sad because people are left without their loved ones and stuff. But if you look in the bigger picture, these are those people who are classed amongst the martyrs because they're being crushed. So now because they're being crushed and they're dying like that, they are being given the greatest rank anyone can have, and that is that to be of a martyr. So that's that's what it is there. Uh, and what you have as well is, now, if we look at those four people who sat the exams, one of them, he failed the last three, but he answered the first question, and that was to believe, right? Now what happens to him? Now we just say, the teacher comes forward now, and says to the examiner, look, this one, he was, he didn't do everything else, but he answered the first main question, and the main question was the important one. He answered that. So let him be in detention for a bit, but then please allow him to come out, allow him to then progress to the next stage, which is Jannah, right? And that's what happens with the Muslims. You had prophets coming before. We believe there was approximately 124,000 prophets. In another narration mentions 224,000 that was sent to mankind to guide them to Islam. Before the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you had La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. That was the message of Islam. So anyone who acts upon that is going to be safe, inshallah. So the likes of the people from Prophet Moses, 
for the people of Jesus. Any one of them who believe that La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, that is it, there's just one God, they will all be put into Jannah. Now you have, with our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, when he comes, he seals it. La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his slave and his messenger. And he's the final Prophet. And that's what you must believe. If you believe that he is only one God, there's no God but him, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final Prophet and messenger, there's no one to come after him, now you have completed your faith. And what happens there is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, on the day of reckoning, when those people are standing there and they've been thrown into the hellfire, those people have been put into paradise, the Prophet, peace be upon him, will be there and he will intercede to God and will say, anyone who said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, please allow them to come out of the hellfire and allow them to go into paradise as well. So now someone may say, you know, well, well that's not fair, but the fact of the matter is, that is fair. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, could have made that supplication for himself, for his family, for anyone else. But he made it for his community. So once we become from that community, when he makes that supplication, we will all be within that as well, and we will be granted it. So these these are just, you know, it's, it's just a simple way. And one of the questions that someone may ask is, you know, there's a lot of things in Islam that you must do. You, know, you have to pray five times a day, you have to, you know, bathe yourself, you have to do X, Y, Z, you know, and you have to stay away from the haram, you have to go towards the halal, and, it, and it's very difficult. Yes, it is difficult, right? It's difficult. No one's going to say it's easy. Because if you look around you, there's a lot of temptation. There's a lot of temptation and everybody wants to be a part of it. But being a good Muslim and acting upon these things does not mean that you don't live a happy life. You know, there's, within the boundaries of halal, there's a lot you can do. The boundaries of haram are very, very small. However, because they've been publicized and they've been you know, put on social media, and you know, like people are just you know, obsessed with it, you think it's a bigger picture, but it's not. In the bigger picture, the haram is very small. It's promoted more, right? It's promoted more. Yeah. Why? Because that's what Satan wants to do. Satan wants every child of Prophet Adam, Adam, peace be upon him, the first prophet, we are all from his progeny. We all came from him. Eventually, we all meet up back to him. Right? He, Satan, is a sworn enemy of Adam, and all of his bloodline. That includes us. It doesn't matter if you're white, it doesn't matter if you're black, it doesn't matter if you're brown, it doesn't matter if you're purple with yellow spots. As long as you are a human, you have Satan as a great enemy towards you. And he will try to derail you. Right? He is the one who allows for all of this promotion. When all of this promotion occurs, he's the one who's behind it. Because he doesn't want anyone to follow the path of Islam. And he challenged God. He actually challenged God, he had the nerve to challenge God, and he said, give me just a short period of time. Give me respite, because he's about to be thrown into the hellfire. And, and he said to God, give me some respite. I will take away as many of his children, as, as in Adam, away from the straight path as I can. I will attack them from the right, from the left, from above, from down, from the front, from the back. In every direction I would attack them. And Allah said, you've been given respite. And the meaning of it, you will be able to misguide as many as you want, except those who are truthful. And that's why when we believe in Allah, we believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we make dua, we, we supplicate to God and we say, you know, allow us to be of those people who are protected from Satan. So all of that is just, you know, a very brief summary of the belief in God and why we believe in God right so everything around us and after that we believe in the angels we believe that they're made from light we believe that they're neither male they're neither female right like the Christians believe that they're female but they're not some believe that they're the daughters of God but like we said there is no children of God right so the angels they're made from light and they carry out the tasks of God now the Lord does not need them God does not need them to carry out the tasks he could do it himself but he created them and they carry out certain tasks. Which with the archangel, 
being Angel Gabriel, uh, Jibreel, Ali Islam. He is responsible for carrying out certain matters. Then you have Mikael, Israfil, Israel. So you have the one who's responsible for rain and people's sustenance. Then you have the one that's going to blow the trumpet on the day of judgment. Then you have the one who is the angel of death. Right? So these are the four archangels. And then you have other angels who carry out other ob uh, uh, tasks and stuff as well. So Amantu Billahi wa Malaikati wa Qutubihi. We believe there are four main books. We believe there was the Injil, the, the Gospel, which was delivered upon Prophet Isa alayhi salam. We believe the Torah, which was revealed upon Prophet Musa alayhi salam. We believe in the Book of Psalms, which was revealed upon Prophet Dawood. And we believe in the Quran, which was revealed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now there were other pamphlets which were revealed upon the other Prophets, uh, Prophet Ibrahim, right, they came with certain ones as well, but there were four main books. However, the previous three books, they were altered by mankind. So the priests and the, those that were there, they altered them. We spoke about this briefly yeah. the other day, how Christianity has changed so much. Yeah. yeah, so that's why if you look at Christianity now, you know, they've got all sorts of like Old Testament, New Testament, King Richard version, you know, John the Baptist version, you've got all these different ones, right? We believe in the original form. We believe these are the word of God. But what we understand is, what God has told us is that these priests, etc., they all changed it. They changed it. Except for the Quran now. The Quran, Allah said, it is up to me, we revealed it, and we are the ones who are going to protect it. Right, so the Quran will never be changed. And this is why you have literally every single year, you have thousands of people just memorizing the Quran. Right? And Allah has made it easy for them to memorize it. So the Quran is everlasting. So Amantu Billahi wa Mulaikatihi wa Qutubihi wa Rasulah. So we believe, as I mentioned, in 124,000 prophets approximately or more. Amongst them, there were 313 messengers. Now, the difference between a prophet and messenger is the prophet acts upon the law which was revealed upon a messenger, and the messenger comes with a new revealed law. So the likes of uh, Moses. Right, Musa, the likes of Isa, Jesus, the likes of King David, Dawood, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. These were all messengers. And anyone that comes after them, they have to act upon him. Right? Until a new one's revealed. But then you have other ones who are just there just for worship. So you have the likes of uh, uh, Job, Ayub, you have uh, Haram, the brother of Prophet Moses. You know, these guys are not messengers. But they're all prophets. And what we believe in the prophets is they're all free from sin. They're the chosen ones by God because they have to lead the way by example. So if they were sinful, if they were able to do sin, etc., then someone might say, then look, it's all good to do sin. But Allah chose these people to show humanity that look, it is possible for you to stay away from that which is impermissible. Right? And so we believe on the day of reckoning everyone will be brought forward everyone will be brought forward and they will be made to account for all the good that they did and all the bad that they did right? and on that day that is the day that the Prophet ﷺ will intercede for his nation so everyone who is a Muslim he, Prophet ﷺ, will intercede and based upon this intercession eventually Everyone will enter paradise from his community. That everything which is good, everything which is bad, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if somebody decides to come to the mosque, for example, you two decided to come to the mosque today. You, know, you guys decided when? Last night? Uh, it, was it was yesterday, wasn't it? I messed with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys decided yesterday that you're going to come to the mosque. But Allah, now this is a good action, and you were only allowed to come because Allah allowed you to come. He's the one who allowed you to message me. He's the one who is allowing us to have this conversation right now. However, Allah, before time was even created, He already knew that on this specific date, the 25th, right? It's 25th, right? Yeah, 25th. He already knew on the 25th of February, 2023, Joe, Rahim, and Hussein will be sat in the masjid 
of Nenta Muslim Center and they will be discussing the deed. Why? Because he's the all knowing. His knowledge encompasses absolutely everything. Nothing can occur without him already knowing. Because if his knowledge was now contingent upon us making our decision to come to the mosque, now that would mean his knowledge was limited until we made our decision. So now he's relying upon us. Once we've made our decision, only then does he know what's going to occur. Now for God, that's a limitation. That makes him deficient. So what we know is that he already knew this. So I'll give you, I'll give you quite an example because someone might say now, so that means that we don't have free will. You do have free will. You have free will. So let's just say there's a psychopath. No, he's not a psychopath yet. You know, there's, there's three doors. There are three doors. Door A, if he goes through that door, he's going to go into Mecca, he's going to perform Umrah he, because he's become a Muslim. Door two, he goes through there, he meets Satan. And Satan says to him, right, you're not a Muslim, you are a pagan. Start worshipping me. So he starts worshipping him. He goes through the third door. When he goes through the third door, this third door, he's got the option now to uh, start murdering people because he becomes this psychopath. Right? So he's got the option to go through door one, door two, door three. He's got the option. Right? Now he's got the choice. He already knows what's behind each door. So he can choose whether he wants to go through door one, door two, or door three. Whatever decision he's going to make is going to lead him down a different path. Allah already knows which decision he's going to make. Whether he's going to go through door one, door two, door three. And he already knows later when he comes through this door, which path it's going to be for him. So now he makes the decision, okay, I'm going to go through door three. So he goes through door three now. And he becomes a psychopathic killer, starts killing everybody. Now, he made the decision, but God already knew that he was going to make this decision. Right? Now that, what he's going to do is bad. It's bad. So now, Allah's allowed him to do that. But now he's also placed us there. Now it's our job now, as, as humans, we have to stop him from doing that. You understand? So now if there's another person now, now Joe's there. Joe says, you know what? I've got these three options. Is There's no way I'm going to worship Satan. Forget him. There's no way I'm going to start killing people. Let me go through door one. I will become a Muslim, I will go to Mecca, I will perform Umrah and stuff like that. So now he goes through that door. Now his path is completely different now. You become a Muslim, you go, you perform everything. Now your action was good, but you were only allowed to make that action because Allah allowed you to. So you had the free will, you had the free choice to make the decision which door you go through. But you're the one who made the decision, but then it was Allah who allowed you to go through that door. But Allah already knew which door you were going to go through. So everything that is good, everything that is bad, it only can occur by the permission of Allah. If that wasn't the case, then that would mean people are self-sufficient. And we're not self-sufficient, we're relying upon God. Look at the khayrihi wa sharihi, khayrihi wa sharihi, wal And we believe finally in life after death. We believe that we will go into our graves, and there is the intermediate to run. In there, we will be questioned by the angels. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And what did you say about this man? Or, who is your prophet? Depending upon these answers, you will either receive punishment in the grave, if you're not unable to answer these questions, or your, will be, your grave will be expanded, it will be full with light, and you will be in peace all the way until the day of reckoning. And on the day of reckoning, you will wake up and it will feel like you've only just gone to sleep. And then the questioning will occur on the day of judgment. And then, inshallah, we'll be admitted into paradise. And the greatest gift in paradise is not the palaces which are made from rubies and diamonds and, you know, the rivers flowing with wine. Yes, the wine will be legal, but you won't be able to get drunk, right? So you'll just be able to taste it, right? And it will be a nice taste. It won't be like the pretty good type thing that you get here, right? Because the, the, the issue with the wine is the intoxication, right? And in there, there will be no intoxication, right? So when you're there, you will have all of these riches, you will have everything that you ever desired. But the greatest gift will be 
that we will be able to see God. That is the greatest gift. And being put into hellfire and being punished, the greatest punishment is not that we're going to be punished, but the greatest punishment is going to be that we are unable to see God. Right, so that was, in a very brief nutshell, this is what I teach people here, like over like months and months. Right, so I try to cover any questions that I've received in the past from new Muslims, from brothers who are you know, wanted to take the Shahada, wanted to enter Islam. So I've tried to encompass all of that within there. Uh, so I'll just ask you now, do you have any questions on the follow up from there? I know yeah. this lecture yesterday, like it's a drop in the ocean, right? There's yeah, so much knowledge. Is stuff that, you know, I've all, I think I've always thought about everything in life, like dead logical. Yeah. And that's why, like, as soon as I went to a school which you had to read the Bible, as soon as I found out there's different ones at like the age of five or six, I was yeah. like, well, that doesn't make sense. Exactly. Because how can how can it's there be different ones? It's, 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 not a, it's not a Harry Potter collection where you have like <laughs> different volumes and Yeah, and like as far as almost, I've always sort of believed in. I think it's just called like the twelve laws of the universe, and that's almost like they have just took that from the Quran essentially and yeah. changed a few things. But yeah. it's all just like karma and. Yeah, it's all just stuff that has always made sense yeah. to me, I guess. Like, you do something good, you get something good. You do something bad, you're going to get something bad. So, as far as that stuff, I don't think there's any real questions. I'm still, because I've never believed in anything, the idea of heaven and hell is still yeah. sort of, I don't know, I believe in it to a degree. Yeah. But there's something... Something there that doesn't, because my brain can't envision it. But I think that's just because I grew up. You know, you, you you can't envision it because <coughs> it's a matter from the unseen. It's a matter from the unseen because, uh, unfortunately for humans, seeing is believing. Seeing is believing, and because you can't see it, right? You automatically, your default assumption is okay. You know, how am I going to deal with this? But then the question is. You know, you breathe in air all around you. There's carbon dioxide everywhere. There's oxygen everywhere. You can't see that. So, yeah. how are you believing that you're believing that you're breathing in oxygen and blowing out carbon dioxide? Right. So, the fact of the matter is, we we know it's true because Allah's told us it's true. Allah's told us in the Quran that it's true. So, the fact of the matter is, the fact that He's told us about all of those things which are from the unseen that we can't comprehend. Just because he has said it, we believe in it. And yeah, it's as simple as that, because that's what belief is. You believe in what Allah has told you. Otherwise, you know, if everything was there, if everything was there in front of you, it was just, you know, logical that, you know, you have to believe in this and that, and you know, it's right there in front of you, and it's not much of a test, is it? Yeah, then everyone would believe in it. Yeah. So some of these things are just there as a test to mankind. And then when, when the day of reckoning comes, that is when we are going to be shown absolutely everything. Okay, so you wanted to see what heaven is? This is heaven. You know, you heard about hell? You know, you're going to cross over it now. Right, you know, if you heard about... I'm yeah. coming to... Because I think it's mainly been since the start of the year that's been like very much, I felt this, felt different. Yeah. So since then, it's like each day that goes by is sort of, my brain can wrap it. So it makes more yeah. sense and I believe more. Yeah. What, and what you're going to find is because, like, like I said to you, we're, we're all from the progeny of uh, Prophet Adam. You know, eventually we all go back to Prophet Adam, and his, the greatest enemy of the children of Adam is Satan, right? And Satan is always going to be there to derail you. Yeah. He's going to always be there, even if, when you become a Muslim. You know, it's not going to be a matter of you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a Muslim now, but I'm safe. You're not. No, you know, it's going to be worse. He's going to come and attack you because he doesn't want you to become. You know, he, he, he comes to me, he comes to Rahim, and he will say to us, he will say, okay, you know, he, he already knows he's not going to take us away from our belief. Like, with, with me, he, he knows, you know, inshallah, it's impossible for him to take me away from my belief. But he may try and come in other ways and say, yeah, but, you know, you know forget going to the mosque, or, you know, forget helping this person, or forget going to that class, or X, Y, Z. He might come to Rahim and say, yeah, don't pray your prayer today. You know, just forget it. You know, you don't need to. Yeah. So he will continuously attack you. That attack will always be there. And even now, uh, when you're when you're 
here and you're on the brink of accepting Islam. You know, he's hate, he hates it. You know, he, do, he doesn't want you to become a Muslim. So what he's going to do is he's going to try and like come and attack you left, right, center. And he's going to say, don't become it. Don't become a Muslim. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because, you know, you're not going to be able to eat uh, Burger King. You're not going to be able to eat KFC. You're not going to be able to eat McDonald's and stuff like that. So what? So what? There's, there's, there's plenty of other foods that you can eat. There's plenty of other things that you can Oh, you're not going to be able to drink alcohol. What? Well, if I really need to drink alcohol to enjoy myself, then that just means that, you know, I'm not a very fun person. You know, that means that I've got some deficiency in me, that I need something to just completely hinder my mind and change my personality as a person for me, you know, to have a bit of fun. You know, and then, then he may come and say, oh yeah, but what about women? Yeah, what about women? You'd like to get married four times. You'd like to have four wives in Islam at the same time. It doesn't mean you're just restricted to four. So, for example, if you get divorced once, right, and you've got three, now you can take another four, fourth one, right? So, you, you, you know, why, why does it have to be like illegal intercourse just for you to enjoy it? You know, illegal intercourse, you know, that's what leads to all of these sexually transmitted diseases and stuff. So in Islam, you've got, there's reasons behind absolutely everything. You know, yeah, so, I think and, that's and, what was so relatable. Everything, everything you're told to stay away from is, it's for your own good. Exactly. Like, it's never anything that's... Exactly. Gonna make your life worse. Yeah, look what they promote as well. They promote like illegal sex, like you said, which leads to yeah. single mother households, which leads to the kids being corrupted, easily corrupted when they grow so, older. So yeah. it's a knock on effect. Especially at the minute, have clear. I don't know, I, I, think it, I think it was Andrew Tate said it like when he was trying to convince someone that God is, there is a power. And he was like, well, equal and opposites. There's, there's got, there is true evil in the world that you can see clear yeah. as day. And I think that was something that again like maybe six months ago sparked my interest because I was like you can see that you know the elites or whatever we want to call the top yeah. people of the world or the the constant, yeah they're constantly pushing stuff and it's getting yeah, exactly. and worse and worse and, so. and, you, and you need to look at it from this way you know why are they pushing all this stuff and when you come back to come and like you know uncover absolutely everything you will come and see that these guys you know they're probably Satan worshippers they probably yeah. are worship, worshiping Satan, so they carry out Satan's work. Yeah. So, you know, my, so my, my, my closing words to you would be: um, don't don't be of those people who gets duped by Satan. Don't let him come to you and say to you, you know, you're not ready, you're not able to do this, you're not able to do that, or you know, give it some time, give it this, give it that, because the fact of the matter is, you know, the next moment's not promised to us. I could just walk outside now, get knocked over, and I'm dead. But he said there's aspects right. that as well. you know, there's, I remember there's a, there's a brother that come, come to me, and he was like, "Yeah, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm considering to become a Muslim, and you know, um, I just want to wait a bit and stuff like that." And then as soon as he said that to me, I was like, "And he was like, have you got any advice to me?" And I said, "Yeah, repeat after me." Uh, and I just made him take the shahada. And, you know, Alhamdulillah, this was like last year, you know, or about, yeah, it's been a, it's been about a, a year now. Um, and you know he's still a Muslim, and he's you know trying his best, and you know and, and he's just bringing his friends to Islam now and stuff as well. I remember yeah. like uh, it's like a, about a couple of months, yeah, a couple of months ago, he just turned up with three, three of his non-Muslim mates to one of my classes on Sunday, and he just turned up. And I didn't expect him to be there, so what I said to the regulars was, look, let me just direct this entire session for them, right? and then that's exactly what I did. And uh, by the end of it, one of them accepted this not. Right? And the others were like sitting on the fence and you know, you know, doing the whole like, you know, and I could just see like just Satan just you know, pulling these strings up and down and stuff. But you know, that's that, that's what it is at the end of the day. So yeah, my, my 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 advice to you would be like, just just, just don't delay it. Yeah. I think if I'm like properly honest about it, I think it's, I don't feel like I know. Because it's so recent, like literally the start of the year, very much got this feeling. Instead of looking into it and then getting a feeling, it was like get this feeling, and then well, obviously Christianity doesn't make sense, Islam makes sense. Then I look into that, and then it was like I told you about this, didn't I? Where I had a day where I, I tried practicing, just looking into stuff, practicing a prayer, doing what I could, and then the next day I was like, well, maybe I'm just, you know, maybe spirituality and just sort of just. Being my own person, 
so I gave myself them restrictions and instantly felt this like depression for that whole day. So then the next day I went back to it and then it was like bang happy again and that felt like very clear signs of like this is the right thing. And the same with, I don't know, I was out and about seeing a couple of smashed bottles like on a dog walk and I was like right I'll pick them up and then I thought I was like well before Christmas I probably wouldn't have picked it up and then that for like the next week almost just like instant good karma for everything, every day was just good. And it was very clear signs because my brain likes to, you know, see things like that. So that was very, you know, funny, was very powerful. Before you said this about picking up the bottle, I was going to say to you that good feeling that you get inside yourself and all of that. That's guidance being penetrated into your heart from God, because God wants you now. Allah wants you to become the Muslim. He's like saying to you, saying to you, look, you lived your life. How old are you now? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. You know, you're about twenty-two years off. You know, being on the opposite side, yeah. it's time for you to come on the good side now. And then yeah. I was just about to say that to you. And then you mentioned the the bottle incident. You know, believe it or not, there's a there's a hadith of the Prophet peace be upon him, where he says that there's seventy branches of faith. There's seventy branches of faith, right? And the lowest one is that you pick something up from the ground, which is going to cause harm to another person, and you remove it from the pathway. Yeah. So. That's, that's faith, man. It's, and even it's, like it's when it's you inside you. about patience, like I've got tattoos, and yeah. the first tattoo I got was patience, and it's the only word that's like stuck yeah. for me. And it's just like there on my wrist. Yeah. So although that's you know not not the thing, yeah. There's been some sort of well, I see as like a link there that's been telling me. Yeah. But I think it's yeah the thing that has stopped me just like because it was almost like I could have just took my shahada the first week. Yeah. because of that powerful feeling and I was like well let me research I've not even like looked into anything at that point and then even now it's like I need well, I don't need to but I should learn more about sort of the life of Muhammad I feel and sort of learn obviously you don't you don't learn after you do it and then you know, you know the, the learning aspect it's never going to stop yeah. That's the whole purpose. <coughs> and the second thing that I know it's wrong, but I, like that's what's funny about it is the thoughts of like for the past two months I've essentially been practicing it as close as I can without speaking to anyone. Yeah. But then it's also like I feel like I can dip in and then dip out. There's not that take the full leap, and I think that's the part where I'm like I know I need to do that, but again it's that. You know, the devil says that <coughs> that's what it is and, and, and the fact of the matter is uh, like, like I said to you you're not, you're not promised tomorrow yeah. right? so you, you could just be ifing and butting and oming and oring and you know a lot of mistakes you soul right? and it's, that's, that's the reality of the situation um, so this you know jumping back and forth and stuff like that but like I said to you it's one of those where even, even when you become Muslim it's going to occur. You can have good days, you can have bad days, but the fact of the matter is you just pick yourself up and you just keep going. You keep yeah. going. And um, it's with regards to learning about the life of the Prophet Muhammad, somebody was saying, you know, you can do that anytime because the whole purpose is once you become a Muslim, you learn it. You know, I've, I've, I started studying when I was about 21, you know, I'm 35 now, and it hasn't stopped. Carry on, carry on, carry on. This all just a learning process. And I know you're a, you know, you, you've mentioned Andrew Tate like a few times already. You know, yeah. It's funny that like, I see, I've seen a video of him just, you know, just popped up on my Instagram yesterday. Uh, and maybe it was because of this moment right here. You know, and he's on his way to buy a Rolls Royce. He just sees a Rolls Royce outside, and he just says, you know what, I'm gonna go buy a Rolls Royce. And he's there, and he just, and he's just three seconds. He just made the choice. I, I want a Rolls Royce. I'm going to buy it right now. And his, and his brother's with him, and the guy on the camera, whoever he is, he's with him. And he's just saying to him, no, that's not how you buy a Rolls. You know, you've got to think about it. Something, you know, you've just taken three seconds. And, you know, he turns around and says, you know, you know, my three seconds is 10 years for other people. You know, and he's just like, you know, the reason why people aren't succeeding is because they're, they're spending too much time on an orange and nothing and butter. Yeah. And he goes, you know, I haven't got time for that. 
I've, I've got my choice and I'm going to make it. And that's the family. He just kind of bought himself a, you know, what, 300 grand yeah. car. You know, just, just, just like that. And that, that's just for worldly things. So when you've got Iman now in front of you, you know, you've got, like, you know, you, you need to stop thinking about it. You need to say, you know what, I've been thinking about it all this time, which you have. You've been thinking about it all this time, that's just four questions. Right? And bam, you know, now, now's the time for you to just put the, put the rest of it aside and just say, you know, right, Allah's inviting me, Allah's calling me, there's a reason I'm here, you know, there's many must have been not good. there's a reason that you will put in touch with Rahim and he brought you here. So, and it's happened like that. that it's been, it's, you're talking a day. There's something I'll tell you something as well. Look, I'm embarrassed saying this, so forgive me, bro. But um, I'm 34 years old. I've been Muslim my whole life. I'm, I've just started watching a back to basic series that he got on YouTube where he's teaching children. Right? So, look at that. I'm, I'm watching a, a, something he's put on YouTube where he's teaching children. Right? So, d- I would say, look, don't, don't delay thinking I need knowledge because you could be searching knowledge for your entire life and it's still a drop in the ocean. Where do you draw the line? You got me. Yeah, but yeah, I'm serious, yes, so I like yes. the series, by the way. <laughs> Look, look there's, there's, there's people, when they come in and they ask questions and stuff like that, um, and I just, I just look at them and I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to answer all of your questions, but you're not going to take Shahada today. You're not, you're not ready for it. And you, you've still got demons that you need to fight and stuff. And there's other people that come to me and I just look at them and I'm like, this person ready. Allah's, Allah's put it in their heart and they're, they're ready for that. And the one thing I'll say to you is that the uncle of the Prophet used to be upon him, Hamza. And uh, if, you, if you ever look at my um, series on the, the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, you know, when he just openly said to everyone, Yeah, I'm Muslim. You know, yeah, I've accepted the Islam. And people are like, Well, they couldn't believe it. And now he's gone home. And that's when Satan's attacked him. You know, made him think like, oh, you know, how, you know, you made the wrong choice. You know, you know, how can you be so sure about this and all that kind of stuff? And then he just made du- du- dua to God. He made he made a supplication to God and said, Look, if this is good for me, make my heart content. If this is bad for me, then then find a way out of it for me. And he said that he, he, he this was the most difficult night of his life. And when he woke up in the morning, bam, he said he had nothing but peace in his heart. Because he, he made it through that. Because all of this doubt is, is from Satan. Because like I said, he, he doesn't want you to become Muslim. He's happy like you going around and saying, you know, jumping back in and uh, jumping in and saying, you know, this is a spiritual thing and stuff like that. But it's not a spiritual thing because the and spirituality... The thing, not out. Yeah, like my brain for the past two months has been so clear on the same thing. Yeah. So it's like, it's trying to tell me, oh, you might do that and that's just another thing where it's like we've well, not for the past two months yeah. and you might die tomorrow so you live in that sort of moment yeah. thing. It's, it's just one of those ones where you know, like I said to you just just because you're a Muslim it doesn't mean that you can't you know have a have a happy and good life and stuff, you know. And I say to people here, I'm like, look at me man, I'm an imam. Yeah. You know, I have fun man, I enjoy myself. On holidays go to restaurants, you know, chill out with my boys and stuff like that. And even uh, for the past, well, for the past seven years, I've pretty much smoked weed every day mm. until I think it's like 40 days ago, oh, which, yeah. which was around the same time that everything happened. I just started every time I would do it, I had this thing that was just like, and we, we, it was we, something I was trying to stop for like two years, and then now I've stopped and no withdrawal, no nothing. And I was like, I couldn't do that by myself. So that was another big thing where I was like, yeah, I didn't do that by myself. That was someone helping at least. <laughs> yeah, man. So, we, we, weeds, we, we, weeds an evil substance because people don't see it as, you know, the, the harmful substance that it actually is. Yeah, and the both. things that it does between your mind and stuff like that. Like, you, know, you know, if you look at, you know, Joe Rogan, if you look at Mike Tyson, you know, the way they were, you know, in the beginning compared to what they are now, you know, it's, it takes a big toll on that. So, you know, if you just go and get like a tabloid newspaper, and give it to them and say, you know, can you read one side of it? They probably wouldn't be able to, because their mind's just been so destroyed by all of this weed and stuff like that. And alhamdulillah, that's where Islam comes in. Islam says to you, bam, 
stay away from everything that's bad for you. Everything that's bad for you, Allah is there saying to you, stay away from it. Overeat it, stay away from it. Right? Uh, you know, eating too much meat, you know, stay away from it. You know, smoking weed, you know, getting involved in drugs, alcohol, any intoxicant, stay away from it. You know, pornography, stay away from it. You know, everything that is bad for you, you know, it's like Allah's already said to you, Lord, give me the guidance. You know, that just you know, now all you need to do is follow it. And then you know what's good for you. It's like you're trying to go against them and be like, no, that's good for me. Yeah, it was there to cloud the judgment on purpose. Yeah. yeah, and it's like the fact that I'd say for the past two years, it's not like every day I'd be like, oh, I want to stop, but there's always a feeling of just like this, it's not me. This is like the job I do as well, I have to be quite focused on it. It was like some days your brain just can't do anything until you smoke, mm. and then after that, you can't do anything. So it's like it was a that, 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 that was one of those ones where. Again, that's what you say to me, you say to you, right, you need it, you need it to function. And then once he's got you there, and he's just inhibited your mind, you know, just, and now it's like, yeah, I'm happy now. And then that's when the reality is. Yeah, and it took reality like everything to get to a certain level of, <coughs> a certain level of bad for me to be like, well, if I'm only 22 now, if this, if this is just going to keep going at the same rate, it's just going to be look, I'll, bad I'll, life. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, look. I've been a Muslim my entire life, but coming towards Islam was maybe probably like six months or so before my 22nd birthday. So you are exactly where I was at your age. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're, you're not at any disadvantage, you're not at any, you know, back foot in anything. You've, you've got your whole life in front of you, you know, and, you know, to learn and everything. And you never know. You, God might make you into an imam where you're just like guiding people and saying look I've been there I've done this look at me I'm here now you know a lot, a lot of guides who remember where you will so you know that guidance is coming for you you know it's been there it's coming for the last couple of months you just need to act upon it now and then you know this these doubts like I said to you these doubts are coming from Satan where he, he doesn't want you to become Muslim um, and you know you could go and you could just think about it for the next a decade of your life or whatever and Satan will still keep coming back with the same doubts with you because I've seen it with some people some people they're just stuck in this endless loop where it's like you know I don't know if I'm ready and you know I need to learn more and stuff like this and then eventually you know Satan just wins and they never come to it mm -hmm. and other ones but they just realize that look it is all just a learning curve and you know my, my, my whole journey is going to be where I'm going to be learning and stuff um, and it's just bettering myself you know, they, they're happy, they're content with this all. They may sometimes yeah. fall off, and then they come to me and they're like, I fell off, what do I do? I'm like, okay, this is what you need to do. Just jump straight back on. And I just yeah. give them guidance, and I like, just jump. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. You know, the bad ones are not those who fall in their sin and stay there. You know, the ones, the, the bad ones are the ones who fall in their sin and they stay there. The good ones are those who just get up, you know, just get that dirt off their, their garments, just crack on and start marching forward. So, and then, like, anytime you need any guidance or anything, you know, just write him or give him my number. You know, all you have to do is just send me your WhatsApp anytime you want, and I'm here for your guidance, here to help you, whatever. You know, so, right. you're bored, you're caught. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I think you're ready. Well, yeah. Simple as that. But you yeah, know, sure. I, I don't want to pressure you or anything. You know, it's it's been two months in the making. Sometimes you just need that, you know, with, with your little kid, and they just, uh, you know, just, you're holding them in the back, and yeah. they're driving the, <laughs> driving the bike, and you just let go. You know, that letting go is maybe the conversation that, you know, Allah sent you here to speak to me, so I like to just, you know, just let you go, where you just start riding that bike on your own. Yeah, it feels good, I think. Ready? Right, let's do it inside the next yeah. Part of the mustard building, but it's not. Yeah, it doesn't class as a mosque. Yeah. We don't. We don't. It's not. It's not. It's not. And anyone who comes to me, I'm like, step into my office. <laughs>
Ra. Ma. Ma. Nir. Nir. Ra. Ra. He. He. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illal. Illal. Lahu. Lahu. Muhammadur. Muhammadur. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Lullah. Rullah. Okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An. An. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wahdahu. Wahdahu. La. La. Sharika la. Sharika la. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasooluhu. Wa rasooluhu. In the name of Allah. In the name of Allah. The most merciful. The most merciful. The ever merciful. The ever merciful. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And Muhammad. And Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his. Is his. Messenger. Messenger. I testify. I testify. That there is no God but Allah. That there is no God but Allah. Who has no partners. Who has no partners. And I testify. And I testify. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his final messenger. Is his final messenger. And prophet. And prophet. And slave. And slave. I believe. I believe. In Allah. In Allah. And in the angels. And in the angels. And in the books that were revealed. And in the books that were revealed. And in the prophets and the messengers. And the prophets and the messengers. And in the day of reckoning. And in the day of reckoning. And I believe. And I believe. That all good and bad. That all good and bad. Only occurs. Only occurs. By the will. By the will. Of Allah. Of Allah. And I believe. And I believe. That. That. There is. There is the abode of the hereafter. The abode of the hereafter. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah.